Hey guys, Nick here. So in this video, what we're gonna do is uh, take our Raspberry Pis, we're going to install DietPy and install an application from there called PyHole. What this application does is it acts as a ad blocker, a network blocker um, in a way. So what that does is kind of protects your network and helps you uh, basically stay safe on the web. So uh, why don't we get started? So first thing you want to do is head over to DiaPi's website. So it's just diapi.com. You can go to download and choose your device. So you can actually do it on a wide variety of devices here. So we chose Raspberry Pi. Click the download button and it just starts. So we already have it downloaded. I'm just going to, you know, continue using that one. All right. So there's also the Pi Hole website which is a, a great area to get some knowledge uh, and information about it. So network-wide ad blocker. It's very cool. You have other ways of installing it as well, just by uh, you know entering these commands. But what we're going to do is actually install it all from uh, Diapi's um, portal. So I have it downloaded here. I'm going to go ahead and use a Win32 Disk Imager. So if you're not entirely familiar uh, what this application is, you can actually just find it on the web, Win32 Disk Imager, download it from SourceForge. I have it, I've used it and uh, installed it on many other videos of mine. So you can just use one of those as a uh, tutorial. So we'll just take DiPi, open this up, and let's go ahead and write it to our, uh, to our disk here. All right, so that completed. Um, I now have my micro SD card. I'm gonna throw that into my Raspberry Pi put it right into the SD card slot. All right, so we just wanna power it on. Let's go ahead and get power to it. All right, green light starting, that's a good sign. I'm gonna get my network cable here, plug this in too. All right, so that is plugged in, it is right here, ready to go. Just let this boot up for a little while. We'll come back to it in probably about 10 to 15 minutes because it does actually update itself. Um, it does notify or notice that it is plugged in. Uh, it grabs the DHCP uh, and just let it boot up. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll reconnect in a minute. All right, so we, uh, we gave it a few minutes. Let's go ahead and try to find it on our network. So I like to use advanced IP scanner. You can do it any other way. You can look into your router and, and find it that way. But I'm just gonna just I'm gonna use this. Let this scan should come up. All right. And there it is. So it did come up as a .249. So we're gonna go ahead and use PuTTY to get to it. So open up PuTTY. If you guys don't um, have PuTTY or know what PuTTY is, uh, it's actually a great tool that a lot of people use to telnet SSH serial into devices. Um, all you would need to do is once you open it up, go to the host name, type in the IP address, if my numlock would work, there we go. And 249, that's fine. We'll click open. So what it's gonna do is say server's uh, host key's not cached. We'll just click yes. And now it wants us to log in. So the login is root and the default password is dietpy. All right, so it's going to go through this initialization. It's going to go and tell you it's free. Click OK. All right, so it's going to go ahead and download another 500 megabytes of data. It's going to download a lot of different things, backend type stuff, update DietPy. So we'll let this run and we'll uh, we'll get back to it. Okay, so DietPy has been updated to the latest version. We'll click Enter. And it's going to go ahead and reboot. All right. 
We will wait for it to come back up online. So we got to close out of that. I'm just going to close this. Let's go ahead and open Putty back up. Just get it ready. Let's see. So I actually have a saved configuration here. I don't think it's the right one though. So let me put the IP address back in. We'll just wait a couple more minutes. Looks like it's still loading, just according to the green light there. All right. So we'll hit open now. And there we go. Perfect. So yes. Root and then diet pie. Still another warning there. All right, so this is what we want to see. So Diet Pie software. So right here, uh, we can basically configure almost anything for the Diet Pie. Uh, so we'll just kind of go down the list here. What we want is software optimized for the Diet Pie. Let's go ahead and click Enter here. So as you can see here, it's got a list of available software which is really cool. It's all organized, desktops, remote desktop access, media systems, and the list goes on and on. So what we're looking for, let's just make sure we didn't pass it here. I don't think we did, let's just head back down. So we are looking yep, just a little bit further is pie hole. So we'll click on the space bar on that line, click tab, and we're going to click OK. Do you want to set up a static IP address now? We'll click No, just because when we do set up the Diapi, it will ask us to do that. Click No. All right, scroll down. So web interface, light T, uh, TPD. That should be fine. All right. So we'll just head down to the very bottom here. Diapi is now ready to install your software choices. Okay, click OK. All right, so another 500 megabytes looks like it's required. It'll go ahead, update, download the most recent Diet Pie, and we'll let that go now too. So it looks like it might have finished the, the installing, so we'll click on OK. All right, Pie Hole is free, powered by your donations, click OK. So it needs a static IP address to function properly. All right, so we're gonna keep it the way it is by default. Let's go to okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead, okay again. Do you want your current network settings as static? I'm just gonna leave it as yes. Okay. Do you wish to install web admin interface? And we say okay. Keep it on the, um, the log queries, and we'll let that uh, let that roll some more. So here it goes, installing packages. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I broke it. That's right. It should adjust itself. Still going. Uh, 
Okay, so configure device to use Pi-hole um, as their DNS. Okay. So the install log is EDC Pi-hole. Web interface is the IP address slash admin. Uh, so what Diet Pi is going to do is actually change this on its own. So we do not have to remember this at all. We'll just leave that as is. Click OK. So as you can see, DiPi is processing something now. All right, so here we go. DiPi changed PiHole web interface password to DiPi. Please use this password at the IP address slash PiHole. So, okay. Let it reboot its services now. And I think it might go through one more reboot, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Yep, system will now reboot. And we should get a server closed. Click OK. <clears throat> All right, so we'll wait a minute. So um, essentially what you have to do from here, uh, we'll go through the steps on the computer as well. Uh, set it as your DNS on your computer or you can even do it on your router. So you can point your router to the Raspberry Pi for its DNS and it will go ahead and block any of your uh, your ads on your network. That's the network wide ad blocker. So I have a Google Wi-Fi. I would go into the settings, change the DNS so it points to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, then it will um, actually block all of your ads from there. It's uh, pretty cool. I've had it. I've been using it for a few days now and Thought it'd be cool to show you guys. So let's um, open up Putty again. We'll use that same IP address. Open. We want to log in as root. DiPi. Make sure everything is running. So what's actually cool about DiPi is you can see all the information here as well as a few other pieces of information there. So you type in CPU, enter, it tells you the clock frequencies, the CPU usage, the temperature. DiPi is a very nice operating system to use on the Raspberry Pi. It's something I discovered a few days ago and have been enjoying it thoroughly. So let's go to, um, let's just go ahead and just open up uh, Google Chrome. We're gonna go to 192.168.86, oops, dot 249. Remember that is the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And here we are. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. And here is a really nice dashboard. So you got your queries, um, queries blocked, domains blocked, and so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do now is log in here. The password is diet pi. And here we go. So shows you all the top domains that have been blocked or hits I mean. And let's go ahead and add this to our DNS. So open network and sharing. I'm gonna click ethernet properties, IPv4, use the following DNS servers. And now I put in the Raspberry Pi IP address, click OK, close. So now let's go ahead and browse to something. So let's try um, speedtest.net. Usually that has a decent amount of ads on it. I believe they're usually on the sides here. We can also go to, let's try msn.com. A, a lot of the advertisements here are from MSN itself, so you might not block too many. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's try google.com let's search for something let's search 
Let's search DiPi. Or let's try Amazon Echo. All right, so I just opened up a few pages here. Queries blocked in the last 24 hours. It's got that there. Okay. Queries blocked last 24 hours. 17.6% of my browsing has been blocked. So there's definitely stuff on these sites that I searched that have been blocked. So this is, of course, is the PC that I'm on. 219 requests, frequency. Let's try website to test ad block. Let's try that. Ad blocking test. It looks like it blocked everything here. You should not be seeing this message, not be seeing this. Let's go back to here. Yeah, it looks like, yep, so it, more requests went through. That is very cool. So, as you can see here, 109,000 domains blacklisted or block lists. You can, on the left here, see the white lists and add them to that. There, here's the query log. So it'll tell you uh, what's been blocked, what hasn't been. You can disable it permanently, 10 seconds, custom time, tools, update lists settings and edit any of the settings here such as the IP address and any other information here there's, there's a bunch of stuff here upstream DNS servers so you can add more block lists very cool all right so that's pretty much it so we just installed a network wide ad blocker you can use this for your entire house your entire network wherever you want to install it it's a very nifty tool, seems, uh, seems to work really well as well. So, all right, if there's uh, any questions, please like and subscribe, and uh, enjoy your day, guys.